Your teen requested a ride, but this time not from you. It's through their Uber teen account. You drive your teenager around a lot to their friend Jacob's house, their other friend Jake's house, to James's, to Jaden's, to Jalen's, to. Oh, uh, mom, this is Jake's house, not Jacob's. Now with an Uber teen account, your teen can request a ride under your supervision. The ride with a highly rated driver, and with live trip tracking, you'll follow along the whole ride to their friends' houses that all sound the same. Add your teen to your Uber account today. See app for details. Bye, mom. Welcome to Saturday Story Circle. Always on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. Steve Gibson of the International Secret Police. Clint and Barney, after effecting the arrest of the smugglers aboard the flower boat and swearing in a new member of the secret police, Bob Gilmore, are flying back to Hong Kong hoping to find some trace of the missing Marsha Winfield. Barney contacts Dr. Kingsley on the short wave set, and the doctor tells him that he has been working on the copy of the map that Marsha had concerning the octopus headquarters, and that he found a focal point. He mentions the name Siang, and then all is silence. The boys, fearing for his safety, hurry on to Hong Kong. We find them breathlessly entering the doctor's home. Dr. Kingsley, are you all right? I certainly am, Speed, but I should be asking you boys that question after what you've been through. Never mind about us. What happened when you were talking to me over the short wave, Doc? Sounded like you was choked off. I was cut off, Bonnie. I didn't know it and I asked you for a reply and none came. Then I found that I'd lost contact with your flight station. I see you took the precautions of calling in a police guard, Doctor. They stopped us as we came in. Well, yes. With Gene in the house, I wasn't going to take any chances. The set went dead. I took it for granted that the octopus had tuned in, and after silencing me on the air, well, might try to silence me in person. You were smart to call the police, Doc. We tried to stop you from saying too much over the short wave, but it was no use. Oh, I should have known better, but I was so happy over finding even the slightest clue as to the octopus's whereabouts that I... Well, I couldn't wait for you to get here to tell you about it. Gee, Clint and Barney, I'm so glad you're back. Hi, Jean. We're glad to be back, too. You bet. Tried to bring you a piece of cloud, Jean, but it melted on the way. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, sounds good to hear Jean laugh again. You know, she's been a very serious little girl while you boys were away. Yes, and uh, particularly after speed left. Well, sorry I worried you, Dr. Kingsley, but I had to do something when we didn't hear anything more from Clint and Barney, so I went to one of the operators here and talked him into going up to Siong on a police launch to help them out. And lucky for us, he came, Doctor. If it hadn't been for Speed's hunch that we were in trouble, we'd be at the bottom of the Siong by now and Bob Gilmore along with us. Oh, how terrible. Oh, shucks, Jane, nothing terrible now. We got out of that jam all right. Now we're looking for another to get into. Well, all right, now. Enough of our adventures for the time being. Oh, uh, what did you find in the map, Doctor? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, come into my study, boys. Can we dump our jackets and helmets anywhere, Doc? I'll take them, Barney. I'll give them to the houseboy. Thanks, Jane. We didn't take time to stop off at the hotel on the way. We was in such a hurry to uh, get here. Here we are. I'll just shut this door so we can be assured of privacy. Now, uh, <clears throat> here's the map over here. You keep it on your desk like this, Dr. Kingsley? Well, while I'm working on it, yes, Speed. That's kind of dangerous. Anybody could come in here and pick it up. Well, that's true. I'll be more careful after this. In fact, I'm going to give it to Clint just as soon as we finish this discussion. I don't want the responsibility of it now that we have a real clue. Tell us about it, Doc. You see this line here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, now, as near as I can make out, by comparing the general layout with city maps of Hong Kong... This area here is the bun. See, that's the waterfront. 
Thus, this line has its beginning there. Mm, the waterfront. Eh? Mm, yeah, of course, that's a lot of territory to cover. I know, Pat. But here is the dock where the ferry boats land from Kowloon. What's Kowloon, Doctor? Well, that's where the large liners land speed. They're too big to land the passengers right at Hong Kong, so they are transferred the ferries at Kowloon and then brought to this landing where my, my pencil is pointing. That map you have is a true map of the Hong Kong waterfront, Doc? The best I've seen, Bonnie. Uh-huh. Now, let's compare it with the one Larry Winfield sent Marsha. Oh, it's the same general formation, all right, allowing for the part that blurred. Mm, that's what I thought. If that's the case, then the ferry dock should be about here on Winfield's map. That would bring this line I spoke of down near the mouth of the Siang River. Siang River? Oh, then you mean... Oh, I'm very sure, Clint. You see, that's the passage to the octopus's headquarters. It begins somewhere on or near the Siang dock. Come in. Come in. I've had bad news. Pasta, what is wrong? You are upset. That is why I brought you back from your little journey, Kwan Wu. I am upset. Clint Barlow is working too fast. But you tricked him, Master. You were successful in getting the Winfield girl aboard the flower boat. Yes, but the flower boat failed to get her to Hang Chao. What? How so? Barlow and Dunlap flew after it and stopped it after eluding one of my pursuit planes and searched it. Hop Toy, the captain, had orders to get rid of the girl and the opium should such an emergency arise. He did so by taking it over the side while Barlow was searching below. Then they trapped Barlow, Dunlap, and a new enemy, Bob Gilmore. Just as they were about to be sunk in the Tsiang, Speed Gibson arrived in a police boat. A result, every man of mine aboard the flower boat was arrested, the boat confiscated, and the secret police still alive. That is very unfortunate. But still, one flower boat is not so much to lose, and we still have the girl. That is not the worst, Kwan Mu. Dr. Kingsley has guessed the passage from the Siang Dock. I listened in on a shortwave conversation between him and the secret police in the plane. So? Yes. Barlow has made a copy of the Winfield girl's map. What is to be done? I want you to contact the good doctor. He thinks that he can aid our enemies safely without harm to himself or his daughter. Tell him, in a friendly way, that such is not the case. That you have secret information that he is to be my next victim. Can I do this without risk, Master? You must. Under no conditions are you to be suspected as a member of my band. You must be to all appearances Kwan Wu, an honorable gentleman who loves China and the law. It will be difficult retaining such an appearance and at the same time warning Dr. Kingsley to be silent. Difficult but not impossible for a man of your talents, Kwan Wu. Remember, if you fail... No one will suffer but yourself. I shall do my best, Master. That is better. You are the only man in my band that I can trust implicitly, Kwan Wu. You are the only one who knows who I really am. Be careful. If I should lose you, it would uh, complicate matters. And since I stand to lose even more, Master, I shall be careful. Good. And now to return to our secret police. They should have arrived at the doctors by this time. The place is guarded by Hong Kong police. In case they decide that the doctor is correct about this young doc, in case they decide to investigate, you know what to do should they discover the entrance to the secret passage. Yes, Master. <laughs> it has been a long time since we used the passage as a trap for our enemies. Yes, and I am looking forward to the chance. All the tortures of the secret chamber do not compare with the young method of getting rid of my enemies. Permanently. What have you done with the Winfield girl and the opium? The opium is hidden for the time being until one of my planes can pick it up safely. The Winfield girl is hidden too, but in a native house. Does she realize where she is yet? No. My operator keeps her drugged. With the drug that wipes out all memory, all will. She does only what she is told to do. <laughs> she will not betray us. How is the drug given? In her food. It has neither taste nor odor, only effect. I have ordered her to be kept in the hut for a week, dressed in rags, so she will appear as any other woman from a distance, should she happen to wander outside. After this, if all is quiet, she shall proceed to Hung Chao as previously planned. You are running a risk keeping her this way, Master. There is another way to silence her, you know. I know, Kwan Wu. 
And I would have used that method first had Clint Barlow not come to China. This girl is a friend of his, a very good friend. As long as she is alive, I have a strong weapon against Barlow. If ever he corners me, Marsha Winfield shall be my means of escape. Her life for mine. That is why she is still alive. I understand, Master. And now enough of this talk. Prepare for your operations at Tsiang Dok, Quan Wu. Do you wish me to go there immediately? Yes. I will keep you informed on what I learn here. But you must be there in case Clint, Barney, and Speed pay us a surprise visit. I... Uh... <laughs> I want them to be well received at the Xiang Dock. This is a hot lead, Doc, and something like this might trip up the octopus. If you don't work fast with that guy, he oozes away and you have to begin all over again. When do you plan to go to the dock? Uh, tomorrow around noon, Doctor. I want to see uh, Li Ying the first thing in the morning and then have enough time to use makeup on Speed, Barney, and myself. Gee, Clint, are we going in disguise again? Uh, yes, Speed. Chinese coolies, uh, as before. Now, looking for the secret entrance to this passage isn't going to be easy, particularly since the octopus knows that we're suspicious of the location. We'll have to take plenty of time looking pretending to be busy with something else all the time. Can I come along, Clint? Oh, no, no, Jean. The waterfront is no place for a little girl. Well, I should think not. Why, don't you know better than to ask such a thing, Jean? Well, Speed's going, Daddy. Well, Speed's a member of the secret police, honey. And handy with his fist, too, Jean. He can fight his way out of trouble. Do you think you could? Well, I guess maybe not. But I could stay out of trouble in the first place. <laughs> you can't fool around with trouble, young lady. It generally pops up whether you want it or not. And usually when you least expect it. Yeah. You stay home, Jean. And I'll tell you everything that happened when we come back. Oh. Oh, Jean. All right, Daddy. I don't say any more about it. I don't think we will either, Jean. Oh, it's getting late, and if we're going to beard the octopus in his den tomorrow, I want plenty of shut-eye tonight. You're staying at the same hotel, the Golden Lotus? Yeah, at least I guess we are. Maybe the octopus has torn it down while we was gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall I meet you boys at the dock tomorrow? No, you better not, Doctor, since we want to attract as little attention as possible. In makeup and Chinese clothes, we can browse around in places where you would be noticed. That's right, Doc. Leave the pioneer into us. Then we'll let you know the minute we find anything. Yes, we might not only need your help, but that of the Hong Kong police as well. You think you may run into another trap? Well, the octopus is certainly going to be on the lookout for us, that's sure. But whether he traps us or we trap him is entirely up to us. This is going to be a showdown. <laughs> 